it's quite late in. And that's okay, cause I do too. Let us know when the radio goes on bleed. Contact That's one down. It's one down. Relax, dude. We're doing our best. Just chill. Um. Did you catch any of that? At the time, I know I didn't. In fact, I missed most of the command comms for the first half of that entire round. And if you've ever dabbled with squad leading, you'll know what I mean when I say that on high action rounds, the game plays more like a schizophrenia simulator than an FPS. And the resulting information overload can be enough to cook your brain and have it melt right out of your ears. But fear not. On today's episode of Yaslas Apposimit, we're going to solve this issue once and for all by taking control of those voices inside your head and weaponizing them so that we can rise above. At the end of the video, I'll be underscoring the key takeaways to put into practice, so if you're only here for the spark notes, skip ahead to the end. In particular, the breakdown of radio discipline and voice audio settings. It's critical, and I mean that. Alright, let's get into it. The footy we'll be reviewing today is the first half of a round from a couple months ago, just a few weeks after the ICO dropped. I had built up a fool's share of confidence in my ability as SL and was starting to take the training wheels off. And then wham! Yeharivka Rasv11 came in and humbled me. Hard. Without mercy. And then never even called. This round tilted me harder than any game of squad I've played to date. It was almost as tilting as playing ranked Dota 2 with Russians. But, if there is no struggle, there can be no growth. This round was directly responsible for the single largest level up in my SL game to date. And we're going to unpack all of it and turn my suffering into your success. We're about to kick off, so let's listen in. Huh? Once we're there, we're going to drop a rally and not a fob or a radio. We are going to split into a north team and a south team. Bravo is going to be south team. I want you guys to be somewhere around here. Alpha, you're going to be the north team. We're going to be somewhere around here. Look at what team you are. If you're purple, you go south. If you're green, you go north. Each team has a rocket. Our goal here is to test with the enemy, slow them down, fuck up their first spot. Uh, it's an educated guess based on our pilot who has played this map a lot, and that more often than not is where the flag uh, first starts in this layer. He's right. Yeah, usually when people say deep in enemy territory, they mean like Stepney, this is like fucking St. Petersburg. You can't see my mark. Oh no, we're gonna we're gonna find it. We're just gonna we're gonna find it real quick. It'll work out. Try and stick It'll to the trees. Out. Stay low key. What's They're not gonna expect the Spanish Inquisition. Should we tell them that the moon's gonna yeah, turn red on the Pacific? Very quick. Yes. Don't Before dismount stay, too early. All right, this is us. Get ready, guys. Left Jason and oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. All right, everybody out, everybody out. All right, jump, 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 jump. Go to your oh. Flint's still in there, or Flinty. Yeah. Rally's down. So where's your second vehicle for the backup? Uh, they're picking somebody up. Yeah, somebody. Somebody. Why are you with your entire Get the rockets out if you have them. Alright, so we're in pretty deep here. All's quiet on the ground, so the sneaky heli insertion was a success. But before things pop off, there's a couple things I want you guys to tune into. First, there's already a lot of command comms going on. That's great. That means teamwork. But back when I played this round, my radio audio settings were all backwards. We'll fix that later. But so far, none of the comms are actually relevant to anyone other than the squad that is directly being hailed. All of that can and should be pushed to squad lead to squad lead direct comms. And not because it's polite, it's out of necessity. At this point, I'm already starting to tune it out. I'm about as ADD as they come, which I have to imagine runs pretty common among the gamer diaspora. For me, filtering out irrelevant audio stimulus is a must. It's like a defense mechanism for my train of thought. Soon, when my own squad comms start to chirp, I'm basically just ignoring the command radio, even when they hail me directly. 
for far too long, I was only focused on what was in front of me. And that's the second thing here. If you aren't tuned in to the command comms, you cannot be tuned in to the bigger picture. The macro side of the game carries as much weight, if not more, than the problem you're currently working. The macro game can render your current objective useless in under a minute. If you want to be a good SL, part of your job is to have your finger on the pulse of the macro side of things. There's a whole metagame there. This takes multitasking and awareness. Poor radio discipline, even from excellent players, only makes it harder. It's especially egregious this round, because I took my squad all the way out to Timbuktu, and the longer we stay here, the longer we're depriving the team of extra bodies where they're needed. Now, I knew we had a timer placed on us. I definitely felt the pressure to move, strike, and exfil. Alpha had successfully moved quietly, and you're about to see it pay off. But afterwards, we get bogged down. For a long time. There's a strong argument that getting bogged down this far away from an active objective might have cost us the game. All right. Yep, yep. Yeah, the hat, the hat uh, should start coming north. The rest of Bravo, me? keep watching that row, but just the hat come up to me. Copy. I'm gonna, should I stay with the hat since I have a rifleman, or do you guys have a rifleman? Uh, we have a rifleman, oh, too. Have one. This is a mistake. If you're looking to hunt vehicle assets like we are currently, each rifleman should always be buddied up with an AT kit and play as a pair. The AT can keep his rocket up so he can quick draw if you see a fast-moving Vic while the rifleman can run security and keep his buddy flush with explosives. Maybe it seems like a minor mistake, but had I not made it, this objective could have played out entirely differently. Colonel, pass me a fire team, Charlie, please. Okay. It's gonna be a slow cap on Novo here, they, uh, they fucked this up. Squad 4, That's an enemy your guys Sub-Zero to come help Novo, Sub-Zero. Enemy heat, squad squad four. enemy helo. I would say wait, I would say wait, oh. unless you can get it when it lands. Copy. If you can get it, take it. Ah, oh, shit, it went right through the bridge for that drop. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna come bring your other uh, guy if that's cool with you. Alright, uh, let's go check out and see what he dropped. They could have dropped like it up in early building. Alright, one that had another year. No, that's okay, I'm. I'm... I see enemy smokes, Charlie. K5 has a bunch of there. Watch out. Us, two weeks. I see them, they're low, they're down the hill. Rally. That vehicle has an RWS system, be careful. Audio on enemy BMP. Make sure you guys get new rockets. Yard. We gotta keep you guys active. Well, squad, can we get you on Novo here, Novo? Yep, we have infantry heading down the road towards us. Yep, they're sleep. crossing the road. I'm gonna open fire. Free to engage. Nice, that's two down. Check the orange smoke. He's dead on the orange smoke. Mmm. Immaculate. To a humble ground pounder like myself, that right there is Valhalla. Now, the rest of this round is basically just a bunch of monkeys humping a doorknob, but like I mentioned in episode 1, when something does go right, savor it. Also, to my friends who suffer from acute WTF Vikazat syndrome, you hear that term RWS, it stands for Remote Weapon System, and it's a good way to help you differentiate enemy vehicles on the fly. If I called in treaded armor with an RWS to my armor crews, they would have handled the rest. Vehicles with an RWS are more accurate and often pack a higher caliber, meaning they can sometimes penetrate armor and deal damage to other vehicles. Also, you can't just shoot out the gunner, because he's a pansy who goes to war hiding in a metal cage, like a dog. Alright, now run that back one more again. Yep, they're crossing the road. I'm gonna open fire. Nice, that's two down. Check the orange smoke. On the orange smoke. We we have to be aggressive. Seven seven ten seven ten four. None of them can be alive. Leave Novo now. Go to uh, west uh, lower Mogi, please. Seven. Moving up. Fucked they got up. A repair station on Charlie. Yeah, let's uh Bravo. Go ahead and That's pick up and there. start moving towards right northeast. There, right. We're gonna BMP take that hill from him. On my mark. On my mark. He moves. He moves north. Can we have on Charlie? All right, now, things start to pop off pretty quick. A recap of the last 30 seconds. We made contact. If our position wasn't known before, it is now. In my left ear, my medic has decided to advance up the hill and outpace the rest of the fire team, and as a result, found the enemy repair station and radio. If you're a super instinctive player and like playing point man and sniffing out radios, play engineer. 
or play anything other than medic, really. We're about to get drawn into a long and awkward engagement here, and we are poorly positioned for it. I call up Bravo team to abandon the southern road and move north into us. I should have made this call much earlier. Basically, as soon as we saw the first heli north of us, that heli means there's a fob. So, we're all too spread out, our cover is blown, and we're about to start digging a radio and summon every single Russian in the Greater Donetsk Oblast. And in the right ear, the team is pulling out of Novo, probably because we're getting leapfrogged as a result of the team being undermanned, which is explicitly my fault. All the while, there's a conversation about tracking callouts for an enemy BMD that's hiding in the trees two kilometers away. All of this happens in about 30 seconds, and trying to make sense of it is just not possible. To even try is such a pain. It feels like having your brain cleft in twain. It's insane. If you attempt to focus on everything, you'll hear nothing. I will reveal my secret solution to this at the end of the video, but for now, just know that I missed a mission-critical radio location callout by my medic, and that is super bad. Radios are so valuable that when they're discovered, it typically takes priority over your other task. On top of that, a fucking helicopter is about to land on me. He's landing right on top of me. This is hilarious. Might have been dropped in there. get aggressive and start pushing up to Charlie. There's an enemy radio on my position. We can easily take this out. Alright, I'm gonna make the push up the hill. Crashing Charlie, Bravo crashing. Let's go. Alright, I'm gonna send my guy in between my dogs on the radio. East. Thanks, buddy. The infantry uh, is east of us on the road. That was an enemy. Skip them. Trade, get, get, get the high ground. Give them the low ground, we take the high ground. All right, friendly's coming up the hill. Where are you at? Talk to me. Local chat. Where's the friendly's? Are you nearby? We're coming in by the yellow building. All right, we're moving in. That's an AK. Alright, the top of the hill, but the yellow building was clear. Where's everyone else? Right behind you. I need you to watch Charlie. I need you to watch Charlie. There's one just south of Charlie. Are you in the radio right now? There's a vehicle down here by me. Yes, I am. Alright, guys, we're digging the radio down now. Come to my position and back me up. As soon as our radio's on bleed, they're going to descend on us like bats out of hell. Alright, so I was embarrassingly slow on the uptake here, but better late than never. In my defense, there's a lot going on, and the squad is spread out. When too many things are going on that demand your attention, you'll have to pick the most important one and work the problem. The only way to know which problem is the most important is from experience. If you're low on bandwidth, don't try and pull an Ender's game. Identify the biggest problem and work to solve it. In this case, the priority is easy. When someone starts digging down an enemy radio, it basically, it's like shooting fireworks into the air that, after exploding, spell out the words, please come kill me. Ideally, it would be preferable to consolidate more bodies in the area before lighting that fuse of that firework, but part of the squad is engaging the MTLB, so that buys us some time. The digging has begun, and we're committed, so the priority now instantly shifts to running security. Running security means setting up a secure area in your immediate vicinity. Spread out just a bit and set up a kill zone. I think of it as setting up little traps. Find a good angle, hide in a bush try and keep everyone from getting the drop in the digger. Need your medic to start making risky revives? Call for security. Got your squad inside an apartment building inside the cap radius? Run security and watch the doors. When a radio starts going down, the stakes get raised. It can be pretty tense. I basically think of it as triggering a very exciting minigame. You just take the high ground here and, and look around. I think they're to the southwest of me. Last we saw. Let us know when the radio goes on bleed. Contact That's one down. It's one down. Relax, dude. We're doing our best. Just chill. 
radio there, squad 5. Our WS is pushing this way, get a cover. Yeah, I think they have been working to take out radio. I think 5 might be holding them off on their fucking first point. Moto, there was uh, one enemy nearby. All right, the next five minutes of this engagement is basically a giant exercise in futility. Our ATs were unable to disable the enemy MTLB, and because we had cleared out the enemy infantry, the MTLB couldn't wipe us. It's an awkward stalemate that formed around a discovered radio, which is usually a pretty short-lived objective. In this case, it lasts over eight minutes before the MTLB ends up buying themselves enough time to dig down their own radio and dip out as we were regrouping. Womp fucking womp. The best play probably would have been to, as players get downed, have them give up and respawn on active flags. But if I'm being perfectly honest, I don't like splitting up the squad as a personal preference for playstyle, and also, I find it so cheesy and borderline exploitative to basically just treat dying in-game as a means of teleporting across the map. I mean, I get it, we're playing a game, but a lot of why I love squad is how immersive and engaging it can be. Even in these awkward, unproductive firefights, we were working the problem, doing our best, and yeah, I got tilted and frustrated, but it was still pretty fun. We were preserving tickets pretty well with revives and all that, and then, given a certain game state, the optimal play suddenly becomes, hey, eat a bullet and instantly fly your soul three clicks south and pick up the fight elsewhere. It just seems awkward to me. I made the wrong decision to get bogged down so far from the bulk of the fight, and there were consequences to that because the rest of the team fought undermanned. But from a game design perspective, misallocating resources in this way should probably carry organic consequences. As in, if I want to get my squad back on an objective, we should have to physically figure out how to do that, like get a ride out. In this scenario, that's an awful call, because we already lost one heli to enemy AA, and it's not worth risking an asset like that for what is basically just nine tickets. And it's not like you can increase the ticket cost of the respawn mechanic, because that's often used to fix glitches in-game. God, this is so fucking cheesy. What, what the fuck is going on? The way I see it, this just boils down to playstyle. I personally like hardcore mode, no respawn commands. But I've done enough to tilt my team as it is. This is not a battle worth fighting at the moment. Squad 5, you got a mic? Uh, yeah, who's asking? Hey, Colonel, Colonel, you got a mic, this is it. There we go. Now I start. Sorry, it's been, we've been in a weird fucking situation. Dude, the top, the top. Uh, we're yeah, active we'll now. Funny. Where do you want yeah, us? Yeah, buddy, can you just die and then and then uh, just spawn at a, an objective? Squad five, it's all good, man. We were trying to kill a radio and occupied their RWS thing for a while. All right, uh, the team wants us to kill ourselves. Um, so let's all get in a circle and shoot each other in the he in the head, or just uh, I think it's uh, till they respawn. What is it? Double news. Um, well that oh saves us time. <laughs> We're going to mob. Coming at lower mob. Whew. Pretty rough back there, huh? I'm proud of you for sticking it out. Making it through a round like that will put some hair in your chest. Now, as promised, let's dive into how to make sure that never happens again. Just stop caring. Fix your VoIP audio settings. On the left is what my VoIP settings look like during this game, and on the right is my current settings. For starters, be like Moses, and after burning that bush, go ahead and part the sea of bullshit. Hard pan one channel left and the other channel right. It'll take some time, but eventually you'll train your brain to automatically know that right ear equals command radio. From there, you simply must have your command comms set to the loudest, and your local comms set to the lowest, with squad comms right in the middle between the two. That's the order of importance. If there's only one channel you're able to listen to, it needs to be the global comms. Everything else is secondary. It's much easier to have your squaddies repeat a call that you missed than to ask for a say again on command comms. Command comms win games. It's that simple. If you want to sniff the upper percentile of SO play, you're going to need to be tuned into the macro layer. Immediately after this game, I maxed out priority speaker ducking at 80% and then gradually lowered it each game until I found the comfort zone. And the comfort zone is that if you're in a firefight and squad comms are hot, command comms will still cut through and force their way into your attention. 
but if you really need to, you can still hone in and still hear the squad comms if you listen closely. That's the sweet spot. Start with these settings exactly like they are on the right and fine tune it. Radio discipline. And now for the good stuff. This one's a bit harder to implement on a grand scale. It basically involves changing squad culture. But honestly, from what I've seen, the bar is set so low that it might actually catch on if we can all just collectively nudge it in the right direction. So what do I mean by radio discipline? It's simple. Don't clog up the damn channel. You have a responsibility to minimize your words and maximize your clarity. Know what you're going to say before you broadcast. You should think to use the SL to SL direct comms first and global comms second. Nobody cares how much build you're asking the heli squad to bring you. Just hit the keypad 7 button, dude. It's right there. Standardized formats and convention already exist for this type of stuff, and most of you probably already know some of it just from hearing it in movies. If you overdo it, it can be a little cringe, but a lot of it is legit, and if applied to in-game comms, will immediately increase clarity and declutter global comms. If I could change one thing about squad culture, it would be to have the SLs use the following format. Who you're hailing, followed by who you are, followed by your message. Squad 3 at Squad 5. There's a tank to your north. Say again, Squad 5. Squad 3, there's an enemy tank due north of your position, 300 meters. Nobody's going to recognize your voice at the start of a round. When you've got a 50 cal shooting over your head, you often don't have time to look down at the bottom left of your screen to see who the message is from. If you're Squad 2 and you hear Squad 2, your ears should perk up. And because they identify their squad number as well, you'll know which keypad to hit for a direct line back. If you get good at it, you can pull this off in the middle of a firefight without too much of a drop-off. I would say about 75% of command comms should probably be SL to SL direct. Currently, it's about 10%. Things like telling a single squad you spotted enemies in their area, or coordinating a pickup from a heli or an APC, or communicating where to shift mortar fire if you happen to be in a position to have a visual on where they're landing. On that note, the term repeat specifically means to have mortars fire that same volley again, so use say again if you need to hear a message a second time. The 25% on global comms should be for the big, important macro stuff. All squads, two tanks spotted north of Novo headed east. All squads, this is two, we're losing the cap at Stepney, we need immediate backup. Part of what makes this game so unique is that at its core, it's a game about communication. To play squad at a high level, you need to be communicating at a high level. If you cannot learn to navigate through the tidal wave of stimulus that's going to assault your brain over the course of a round, you will never learn to enjoy the role. If you practice this intentionally, it will become second nature and you won't even notice it. Alright, it's time for a quick recap of the Kernels of Truth for Episode 2. Don't get tilted. Protect your diggers. Savor the good stuff. Diddle those dials in the audio settings. And for the love of God, <laughs> exercise a modicum of radio discipline. Oh yeah, and PTFO. Catch you guys in the next one. Right, go, 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 oh, go, right go, here go, in this go, building. Go, go, go. Right next to me. He's in the southeast corner. Medic, where you're at, he's to the left of you in that building. In that building. Ops wanted some initiative, blew up their entire quadrant. <laughs>